Hey everyone, meet Kevin here, and I've got updates for you on the next stimulus package. And it looks like it's going to include stimulus checks as well. I'm gonna give you a full breakdown of everything I know. I spent the last three hours researching everything I could possibly figure out about this next bill. And I'll tell you, anytime there are whispers in Congress that, oh yeah, we're ready to submit the next, uh, you know, the next big bill, like, and I'm talking the next real big package, not like one of these fringe proposals, the little ones introduced by junior senators or representatives, though no, the next big one. Everybody tends to know about it before it ends up coming out. So uh, let me give you kind of a rundown of uh, what these whispers are sounding like. So right now, the biggest thing they start with is suggesting, and this is a quote, do we want a press release or a bill we can pass into law? And this is great because it really teases, hey, look, we can you know, we could put a bill in and just submit it and go, everyone gets $10,000 a month forever. <laughs> like, it is not necessarily gonna go anywhere. The, the House leadership right now, they want a bill that they can introduce that people in the Senate are gonna look at and go, yeah, we, we could we could probably work with that. The, usually the best thing is you start a dialogue with the other side. Hey, you cool if we, you know, put something like this together and then we talk about it? Yeah, yeah, all right, let's put, you know. So those are the whispers we're hearing. Okay, here's what else we're looking to, to see in it. So that $800 billion that was a rumor for the amount of this next stimulus package, it looks like that's possibly going to be the amount allocated to state and local governments. But the actual package itself might be closer to a few trillion dollars because it's going to include funding for vote by mail ballots, safety precautions for frontline workers, more testing, expanded access to broadband. We also have the leadership of the House Ways and Means Committee. That's the committee that sort of directs funding and appropriations for bill, aka money for bills. Uh, and, and they say uh, they see maybe one to more direct payments to Americans. Now, I wanna clarify here, more payments does not appear to be some kind of a universal basic income. I don't think that's going to be very likely, and I don't see any kind of recurring payments super likely. You know, maybe one, two months, that's probably palatable. Maybe they'll introduce it at three months and they'll end up getting watered down to one to two by uh, the Senate, we'll see, but this is definitely coming in. We're also seeing pet proposals coming in and they say pet proposals are kind of like you know when the leadership puts together a massive two trillion dollar package then you kind of get like the newer representatives like can I have some money for my district? Hey, what about me over here? In fact, there's a Republican that's like, hey, um, you know, we got 58% of our tourism that comes to Alaska, comes via cruise ships, and they need a little bit of help. Can we get some funding for cruise ships in here? This is kind of how you end up getting all of like, it's basically how a bill turns into an 800 page bill. You get these initial ideas, then you explain those, and then everybody and their mother puts in a proposal because they realize the odds of a small minor bill getting through the House, the Senate, and getting signed by Trump, very, very small. So people fill up the bill with all the junk they want for their district. Like, well, I need a new park. Well, I need a new hospital. <laughs> well, I need universal basic. Yeah, no, that's not going through, <laughs> right? All right, let's see what other information we have. So. Republicans, some Republicans, especially uh, in the House, have already signaled support for income guarantees. Marco Rubio in the Senate specifically came out and suggested revenue replacements for local governments for essential services. He thinks there's a valid area of concern there. So if you're an essential service, possibly some sort of income guarantee there. Other Republicans have also signaled support for quote, household aid. Some of these are kind of like pseudonyms for more stimulus checks, but I feel like they don't quite want to say that yet because it's not the most popular with Republicans to say, yeah, yeah, more stimulus checks because it sounds too similar to universal basic income. So income guarantees, household aid, maybe one more direct payment. See all these like other words they're using here? <laughs> it's just jargon. All right, obviously money for state and local first responders. All right, what do we have here? Democrat leaders have made clear the legislation will feature a host of big ticket items, billions of dollars to expand testing, unemployment benefits, small business loans, and aid for state and local governments. 
That was right from The Hill. We've got The Wall Street Journal here, The Washington Post. We've got articles here from all different sides and quotes directly from senators and representatives' websites. For example, we've got Mitch McConnell saying, Republicans will be insisting on strong legal protections for the front lines. We won't let our historic recovery efforts be diverted so taxpayers foot the bill for the biggest trial lawyer bonanza in history. He's going off about these legal protections. I, I guess I get it. It makes sense. You know, like we've said before, we don't want businesses opening up to have people essentially suing the businesses because they end up getting sick because they went in to buy a hamburger and they left with the hamburger and the Rona. Um, and not like the Corona, the drink. I wonder how Corona sales are. Also, McConnell said this yesterday that he's not ruling out the additional package. So he's obviously uh, in talks with Pelosi, obviously open to uh, some kind of additional package here. And they're gonna be getting a big one. Remember right now, the Senate Republicans and the Senate in general, they're focusing on judicial nominations. There's a good chance they're going to be uh, filing a, uh, or, or voting on a measure to overrule Donald Trump's veto. Yesterday, Donald Trump vetoed an, a bill that was passed like months ago that says Donald Trump's not allowed to unilaterally attack Iran without the approval of Congress, which just basically means Trump can't wake up one morning and go, we're gonna strike Iran. Not that he does that. I mean, I don't know what he does, but the point is Congress says, if you're gonna strike another country like Iran, you need to let us know first and you need to get our permission first. Uh, Donald Trump vetoed that because it's kind of like, ah, you guys take too long, is my assumption. And so now the Senate might actually vote today on Thursday to see if they can overrule Donald Trump's veto. They'll need a two-thirds majority, though. That'll be interesting. Then we've got Rand Paul. Uh, Rand Paul, not the biggest proponent, though. This is probably like on the far opposite side of more stimulus. He says, there really isn't any money to send anymore. I mean, there is no rainy day fund. There is no savings. We'd have to borrow it, he said. A lot of the money we currently borrow is from China. So we'd have to be more indebted to China in order to send more money to states. I'm not quite sure how much of that is narrative or politics, especially after the video I did yesterday on China's involvement in politics and stimulus, especially since it seems that around 70% of the money that we borrow, we borrow from ourselves. So we kind of owe that money to ourselves. But again, not trying to get political. I mean, yeah, there's definitely a proportion of money that we borrow when we borrow money that comes from China. So he's not wrong about that. It just shows, you know, there's definitely going to be resistance to this package. This is not going to be a big slam dunk. Dunk. And I think that's why you see a lot of people are going to be putting in a lot of crazy pet provisions into this bill, because I think a lot of people in Congress are going to look at this and go, this is my last shot at getting something passed before the election. All right, then we've got indications that uh, they, Democrats actually do not seem very excited about a payroll tax cut. Uh, but obviously a Rep uh, Trump is, so we know Trump's very for that. I wonder if he's going to uh, somehow insist that Republicans push that in. That'll be interesting. We know that uh, we also have Democrats and Republicans talking about relaxing the 75% payroll uh, rule on the Paycheck Protection Program. And then on sort of the other side of Rand Paul, we've got AOC, who uh, is a Democrat from New York and is calling for $2,000 in monthly recurring payments to all families, regardless of immigration status, and $1,000 per child. It says here, the New York Democrat also wants rent canceled during the pandemic and says, quote, we need to be able to play hardball so that working families can get the meaningful help they need. And here's another interesting one. This one's called the restart proposal. The restart proposal was proposed by Democrats and Republicans, sort of a coalition of about four of them. And it would seek to, quote, provide funding to cover the next six months of payroll benefits and fixed operating expenses for businesses that have taken a substantial revenue hit during the COVID-19. COVID-19 epidemic. Interesting. I mean, this is really fascinating. Then there are three really awesome proposals that are linked at the top of my description down below. One of them actually gives you two free stocks with Weeble. Another one lets you buy life insurance within five minutes on your phone like that. It's easy to sign up. You get a quote within like 30 seconds. It's crazy. It, it keeps getting faster how people keep messaging me going, I got to do it faster. Uh, and, and then of course, there's a proposal to join me in my awesome programs, except you could actually click on those and do those right now. You don't have to wait for Congress to pass. 
that? <laughs> now, in terms of when the bill comes out, well, the bill is going to come out and get announced right after you hit the subscribe button, because then I'll be able to announce it to you as soon as it comes out. It is expected to come out, though, either today, tomorrow, or Monday or Tuesday, so there is a chance we'll have to wait the weekend. I it would not be surprised at all. In fact, I'm almost expecting, I'm gonna go as far as just saying it, I'm expecting this next bill to include additional stimulus payments. Whether or not that actually gets through the Senate, I'm not sure. I have almost zero hope for a year's worth of payments. Uh, I, I also have very little hope for six months worth of payments. I think anything recurring like that is gonna get, you know, chucked by Republicans pretty fast. But uh, I do think this bill is going to be massive and beefy. It's probably the last big stimulus package that we'll be able to expect to see unless there's some kind of crazy second wave. But I do think that uh, there, there's real optimism to be had for at least one other check, possibly even two. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon.